Are you ready to ignite us? All right, let's do it. All right, so like uh, he said, I'm Michael Champlin. I'm a graphic designer and photographer from Tulsa. This is not a presentation about Comic Sans. This is a presentation about taste, though I intend to tell you in five minutes how those things are oh so closely related. <laughs> I think that our culture has a rich history of doing really wonderful things with communication. I think we used to take it a lot more seriously than we do now. We used to write a lot of letters uh, on nice paper with nice pens and put them into nice envelopes and write postcards. And all you need to do for proof of that is look at old correspondence. There's just an attention to detail, an attention to the beauty of the thing that I think is, for the most part, completely absent in modern communication. And I think that's really sad. And uh, I blame the computer. I blame the internet. I blame email. I blame Facebook and MySpace. I could go on and on, but essentially what we have is information that has grown far faster than our capacity to comprehend it. And so what we end up with is this sort of sensory overload on the internet. So we get websites that are just sort of throwing things at us violently with no sense of order or really any sense of, it's just complete chaos. And so what we get from this, we get, first of all, things that are with a complete lack of design, we also get things that are just really poorly designed. We get bad color schemes, we get bad backgrounds, and we get bad typefaces. This, of course, is Comic Sans, the villain of the evening. Uh, I just, you know, it's, it's one of many bad ones. It was designed in the mid-90s by a man named Vincent Conner from Microsoft. The band Comic Sans Manifesto would remind us that Comic Sans as a voice conveys silliness, childlike naivete, and irreverence. Well, sometimes that's appropriate, he designed the typeface after looking at comic books that he had in his desk drawer at work. He had some Batman comics. He had the Watchmen graphic novel series. And so what he was trying to do is design a typeface that was a more conversational and upbeat replacement for Times New Roman. And in that sense, okay, maybe he succeeded, but it's out of control. So what we have here is a sign that's warning us if we take our boat out on the water at the wrong time that we might actually die. <laughs> and so I would ask why someone chose to use a conversational upbeat font to tell us that our life might be in danger. <laughs> and that would bring me to say that good design, good visual communication is all about being context appropriate. I wouldn't wear a Hawaiian shirt and flip flops to a job interview and I hope that none of you would either. But why would we use Comic Sans or Papyrus or a bad font on an inner office memo talking about health insurance or a meeting or a change in policy? And yet I know this happens all the time because every office I've ever worked in, I've gotten some emails in Comic Sans. So I'm just asking you to think about it so that when you sit down and you're choosing your fonts, your colors, your styles, think about what you're trying to say and what the choices you make say about that. So I'm asking you to make smarter typographic choices. <laughs> say no to Comic Sans, say no to Papyrus, but it's not just about bad fonts. It's about choosing fonts that are appropriate for what you're trying to say. For instance, Helvetica Black says that I am important, I am loud, listen to me. Whereas a serif font says that I am well-spoken. A light font like District Sans may say I am stylish and thoughtful, but these are all just words being given a voice by a typeface. Secondly, clip art is not your friend. <laughs> it's cliche, it's predictable, and it almost never says anything at all. And so my argument is that 99% of the time, a photograph is going to do a lot better job. Use your own photograph. Who doesn't like to show off their photographs, right? So you don't have an appropriate photograph. Go on Flickr, look for the Creative Commons license. The Creative Commons license says you can use this photograph in your presentation, your report, as long as you attribute the author, and you may have noticed I did that earlier. Photograph, simple type, it allows you to say more with less. I could have used a crappy clip art coffee cup and I had a million available to me, but instead I chose this photo I took with my camera phone because it says a whole lot more about what I'm trying to say and me as a person than clip art would have. And the great thing about this approach is that it puts the focus back where it belongs. It puts the focus on the content rather than the crazy ornamentation and the kitsch and the color schemes. It puts it back on the content. So Lee Iacocca said that you can have brilliant ideas, but if you can't get those ideas across, they won't get you anywhere. And that's basically what I'm trying to say. What you have to say might be great, but it's not gonna do you any good if you can't get that point across to who you're trying to get 
the point across too. So I would just ask, next time you do that, take the time to think about what you're saying to people. Thank you very much.